After Truck Kuin takes her mother away from him to another world, sadness-filled MC Saniatsu has just one thing in his life left which makes it worth living and that is his best friend Ryuta. But one day he finds his friend dead in his house. Not only that, even most of the people of the city are all dead due to an emperor who daily asks a two-option question and kills all the people who choose the majority side of the answer. A train arrives at the station but no one is boarding it as most of the humanity has turned into stone. Only a few individuals are still moving around like normal human beings. Our MC and his friend is one of those lucky or shall I say unlucky individuals. They are trying their best to cheer each other up during such troubled time. But then suddenly a question pops up on their computer screen asking if they are currently looking at the screen. Genius MC thinks it might just be some kind of a screensaver and pays no mind to it. Then while walking back home, another one of his friends shows support to MC on his mother's death anniversary. The friend wants MC to know that he is there whenever the need for something arises. Next day arrives and MC notices there is no signal on TV. He is also unable to even call his dad. While walking outside, he notes an eerie quiet everywhere. This feels like one of those moments where a friend could really come in handy. But when he visits his friend's home, he finds that his friend is already dead. He knocks on the door really hard hoping that his friend is just knocked out or something, but there is no answer from the other side. Then he receives a call from his school friend. MC instantly asks the guy on the phone to get help for Ryuta. But the guy on phone tells him that there is nothing that can be done to save Ryuta now. MC heads for the school and demands an explanation about what is going on. Then Yagihashi, the president of the student council, tells him that all of their families are also dead. It seems like these are most likely the only ones left alive from this school. They are unable to contact the police, the fire department, or anyone else. So reasonably, it can be concluded that they are all dead as well. They certainly don't know what happened. But the fact is people all over town are dead. The ten people here are the only ones they have been able to contact. Then suddenly another question pops up on the computer screen there asking about the Japanese citizens living in Tokyo Prefecture. This is just like how another question appeared yesterday. The others still alive there all saw the screen. The computer is not connected to the internet. In fact, there is no internet signal at all in other devices as well, but still they are somehow getting these strange questions. They also have no gas, but they can still use water and electricity. The radio is also working. Then next day they find out that the president is also dead. He left a message explaining about a possible theory behind the cause of all this. It is somehow tied with the question displayed on the computer screen which can be answered in either a yes or a no. According to the president next day, either he will be dead or the others will be. Then another message pops up on the screen saying that test run is complete and rules will be announced tonight. Later at night, they notice another one of them has not shown his face today. There is also no more service network anymore for calls or messages. Then on the screen, they hear a strange voice congratulating them for staying alive by chance. The voice introduces itself as the emperor. For the one million humans still alive in Tokyo, the test run has concluded. Then the emperor announces the beginning of Tasuketsu absent majority. Now the remaining humans must search for blue post boxes or red PCs in designated areas that change daily. There they must submit a question with two possible answers. Questions including designations of individual people or previously featured questions will not be counted. The first applicable question submitted will be featured. Then every day at midnight, the majority side of the two answers will die. Hearing all this is quite scary for everyone remaining, but it's not like they have any other choice than to play along. Then Emperor also tells about special envelopes which contain unique powers called special privileges and privileges. Each person can obtain up to one of each. Finally, when one person remains, they will be offered the privilege of meeting the Emperor. Next day, everyone starts looking for places to submit their questions. While looking around, they find the place to be very quiet. It's almost impossible to believe that about a million people are still alive. MC talks to the leader of his group to tell her his plan to take down the emperor because making it out alive means nothing if it means being alone. So MC is only playing this Tasuketsu game to survive, but to simply use it as his means to find the emperor. Also, the emperor has only told them the absolute minimal rules. 
They have no idea about many things like what happens if there's an equal number of responses to a question. Does it not count? Will both sides die or will there be some kind of adjustment? There are many mysteries regarding this emperor. But the mystery is also about the president who came to school from a long distance even when the trains were down. The girl also tells him about how the president had arrived before everyone else. It's almost as if the president already knew that the Tasuketsu had already begun. MC was having a really hard time thinking about all this, but then the girl starts calling him by his first name suddenly which surprises him. Girl thinks that since they can die any time now they might as well get close to the people in the meantime. MC understands and starts calling the girl by her name Saya. Then Saya even holds his hand which causes this nerd MC to straight up lose his mind. The girl then gets a bit back understanding that this might be a bit too soon to get so close. Looks like the MC is not genius in recognizing opportunities to smash PU then MC finds the envelope of privilege and decides to not open it until meeting other members of their group but still he is not able to find any postbox. Then we see a boy hoping to find a PC in school but suddenly he finds a gun put straight against his head instead. The boy asks Sudo his senpai about where he found this gun but senpai does not want to reveal anything regarding that. However then he does say that he found it lying on the street. According to Senpai's theory, the correct answer is to just kill. He thinks this is the only way to stop the Tasuketsu as the Emperor must be one of the humans who is still alive. Hearing the gunshot, MC and others head for the place where Pseudo-Senpai is running around with a gun. No one wants to be found out by this Psycho-Senpai, so they run to the other direction as fast as they can. The Sensei quickly prepares a vehicle and asks everyone to get in, but Narita fails to reach in time, as the Psycho Pseudo Senpai points his gun towards him. The girl with pink hair kicks the Psycho to save Narita, but now Psycho turns towards her with his gun. But this time the MC does the kicking and he kicked really hard. While Psycho was recovering, they all managed to make their escape. However, the Psycho has still not given up. He also wants to take down the Emperor next. The kid and the other students are all safe thanks to Sensei, but no one among them has been able to find any postbox. MC is really irritated and even kicks a lamp in his frustration to not being able to find any postbox or PC. Saya suggests taking a break, which they do where they talk about their feelings. MC wanted to avenge his friend, but now it seems like he won't be able to accomplish anything. To cheer him up, Saya takes a selfie while smiling. Since this was a nice experience, Saya also hoped to get one selfie with their whole group as well. Hearing this, MC instantly starts running as they were supposed to be meeting up with them. They lost track of time, so now they decide to watch the question at another location. Emperor starts tallying the majority as the question pops up asking male or female. After answering MC and Saya both hold hands while promising each other that whoever makes it out alive among them will take down the Emperor. Then after midnight passes we see that MC is the one down on the ground while Saya is still standing. Plot twist. Looks like Saya was the MC all along. All alone Saya is dragging the non-alive MC along with her while crying her heart out. When she reached the others she gets more reason be sad as there are many others who also died. The other girl decides to not cry even though she herself is very sad since she is the older one. While trying her best to keep herself together she notices the special privilege envelope on the MC. Next day when Saya is feeling a little better the remaining girls decide to continue the quest to get their revenge and find those postboxes. When the girls leave the kid wakes up and even manages to find a blue postbox. This guy looks like is a pro in postbox hunting as he keeps on finding them left and right. One day he gets noticed by someone else near a postbox. This Rika Suzuki is ready to even take down the kid permanently as it's not like there is any cop around. But the kid rejects this. However, Rika does not care what the kid wants so she attacks but misses. No matter how many times she tries she always keeps missing. So Kid ignores her and puts in his question then runs away. While running away he even says that he hopes that Rika manages to survive which confuses her. But she does not manage to stay that way much longer as another woman takes her down from behind with a taser. While falling down Rika got hurt with her own steel pipe. The woman who shot her then offers a way to survive her current predicament. Saya and her senpai fail to find any postboxes. Senpai has started to believe that maybe they don't even exist. The next question shows up asking if they are alive or dead as a result of Tasuketsu. However, the people who were Una live become alive again, even the MC. 
Saya is really happy and instantly hugs him. The friend wonders when did they both got so close. He also wants to be hugged so he goes towards Senpai hoping she would hold her. But she just kicks him instead while asking him to die again. The kid also acts as if he became alive just now hiding his true abilities from others. Everywhere around them lights start up as everyone who died from Tasuketsu was revived. The gun senpai has no idea why people are coming back to life but he seems to be still hellbent on killing them again. Behind all this revival is that taser woman and her friends. But the leader here seems like someone really crazy who even knows about the kid with rejection power that he also does not like how Ishiki the red-haired woman just thinks of Tasuketsu as a game. But Ishiki has her own plans which would begin the real fun part. Everyone is surprised to see another question. The kid realizes that someone used his question with their prime right to re-execution. This was done to prevent revival of victims later on. Suddenly some stranger comes and does not like all these kids here this late at night while having no idea about Tasuketsu. MC quickly asks him to look at the screen and even though he does exactly that he still dies. The crazy guy blows up the car in which Ishiki the red-haired woman was sitting since he don't need imbeciles who consider this just a simple game. MC and Saya talk about and understand that the reason of revival has to be the question which made the majority answer which was of the dead people undead meaning alive. Now that even the dead are part of Tasuketsu it just changes up the entire game. The kids alone think about his fault of using that question so soon. The MC Seniatsu feels his sadness and asks him about it that the lady senpai and the teacher share information about all the students and each other. The kid Omi finally cheers up and even smiles for the first time with everyone else. Seniatsu speaks about how Truck Kuen took his mother away from him when he was little so his life was filled with sadness. Only when he met Ryuta Ichinos was he able to be happy once again. Ryuta was the one who taught him the importance of best friends. This is why Seniatsu also wants to keep on helping others. Next day on his hunt for post boxes, someone suddenly puts a gun behind Seniatsu. The guy wanted to speak with Saya, but right now he does not have that option. He seems to be pretty calm fellow and just asks Seniatsu to not resist or run, and once Seniatsu agrees, he even puts the gun away. The gun senpai tells him about how he killed Mika and allows Seniatsu to ask anyone question regarding that. Seniatsu asks why he relies so much on Gun when he can just try other ways like calmly talking similar to what they are doing right now. Gun Senpai then reveals that Mika was the one who got them killed with the male or female question. Now it's Gun Senpai's turn for asking so he asks if the number of people in Seniatsu's group changed and who suggested running away from the school back then when he was taking everyone out. Seniatsu honestly answers with a no and Senpai. Now Gun Senpai Kaido understands that he was both wrong and right regarding his beliefs. At first, he presumed that Omi Jean the kid was the emperor as he saw Omi's power of reject working right in front of him when his gunshot missed. Kaido has the prime right of obtainment special power. Kaido even suspects that Omi had a prime right and right powers before Tasuketsu even began. But that is not even the main concern anymore as Kaido further reveals that there is a traitor among Saniatsu's group who also possess a prime right. Kaido might have killed some people but still Saniatsu wants him to join his group once again as the reasoning for those killings was the fact that Kaido was just trying to beat the emperor and they really need someone like him. Hearing this a part of Kaido just got saved so he also reveals that the prime rights will demand a risk when opening the envelope involving loss of a body part. Kaido chose his reproductive parts as that function is not needed in this situation and it's best to get rid of any vital points. His prime right obtainment allows him to maintain the number and guarantee the availability of any object once he has obtained it. This allows him to have an unlimited supply of bullets. Then they talk about the second question which Kaido believes to have happened due to someone using their right to enforce a second question. Kaido also thinks that the emperor's explanation of the rules does not fit the reality. So maybe this emperor himself does not have a good grasp of Tasuketsu. The top priority for them right now is to find the traitor so Seniatsu will also have to be careful of Saya. Kaido will act as Seniatsu's sword and defeat the emperor. All he wants Seniatsu to do for now is keep looking for post boxes so that he can continue surviving. 